But when he speaks to us in the night seasons, how many of y'all have the good Lord speaking to you in the night seasons? Like you've heard these sisters talk about. Amen. Don't overlook it. God can speak to us while we're asleep or while we're awake. I'm going to have my brother come up here in just a moment, Jonathan McClellan, but something just came to me. Um, you know, if you guys go to that Solmonad resource page on Facebook, I talk about all the petitions that are on there, and and um, we have uh, all of their websites are listed. Any event that's happening here in the Twin Cities, in fact, even across the country, I post it. Some of y'all are here for different organizations. I post it. Anything that's out there for justice, I'm posting it on this resource page because it is one community. Yes, please, take a few. We are one community, we are one people, and we are all here today because we are in solidarity and we have one heart for justice. Amen. 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 And there's another petition that's going around. It's called Every Case Matters. It is a nationwide petition, but it involves the cases of my sisters right here. It's called Every Case Matters. And uh, I will be going with my sisters, and we will be taking it to Congress on August the 27th in D.C. I will be attending the National March there. Anybody else going to attend the National March on the 28th? Amen. My sister right here. So Every Case Matters. You guys, we only have about a week left where we can get that petition signed. Please take a look at it. It takes 30 seconds to sign. Things like that are making a big difference, you guys, because we are getting the attention of those who are really just want to keep us silent, but we will not be silent. Amen. I have Jonathan McClellan coming with me. Just a moment, I want to read a little something about my brother here. Jonathan McClellan is a community activist who works closely with legislators at the Capitol in St. Paul to help draft and advance criminal justice reform, restorative justice, human rights, and public safety legislation for the state of Minnesota. Jonathan is a congressional advisor and an elected national delegate for the 2020 presidential election. So can y'all give it up for our brother, Jonathan McClellan. He has been faithfully serving this community alongside with myself and others. Uh, loving on these families, serving these families um, selfishly and just giving. So he has some uh, very valuable and important key words of wisdom. So open your ears to hear what he has to say. All right. All right. Greetings. My name is Jonathan McClellan. Um, I'm going to share some words with you. Um, I'm going to start with uh, 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 addressing uh, one of the elephants in the room, and that is that we're in an election season. And I think it's important that um, when we're talking about change within the system, that we talk about change with, uh, in ourselves. And then we take that change and we use it to change the system by pushing out politicians who fail to do their job. Um, there's one individual that I know of in Maple Grove named Warren Limmer, and he is one of the senators that have been blocking uh, uh, legislation for change in the state of Minnesota for over 10 years. And I know because I've been down there, I've been writing the legislation, I've been pushing it. And I want you to ask yourself um, what it is that you can do. And one of the things that you can do is that you can contact research uh, your elected uh, officials, research the people who are running, and find out what they're doing, and reach out to them. They will talk to you, and ask them what they need, and work on their campaigns. Um, and I think that that's one of the biggest things that we can do is sit over here and support um, our candidates. Um, not only our elected officials there, but also our judges, our prosecutors, um, often we only vote turnout for um, presidential elections, and it's important that we know that the elections that also matter are the judges, the prosecutors, our local city council, and we have to change those seats too. We have to research those candidates, and we also have to sit over here and support, physically support the ones who, who are, are going to do the most good for us and carry our agenda, not their own. So, with that, I wrote a speech on the 26th um, after George Floyd died, and I critiqued it at his, after his memorial, and I'm going to share that speech with you. Um, I do this speech um, 
everywhere that I go because they say that when you repeat it into the, the spaces that you're in, that it, people will absorb it um, over time. So I'm gonna read a speech for you that I wrote and I think that this speech captures the sentiment of everybody that's here, everybody that's around the world, okay? I was w watching a hearing in the Senate where you had had police officers talking about how their feelings were hurt, how they thought they were in a war in Minneapolis, one, mind you, where they were sitting on the top of the roof of the third precinct laughing while they were shooting rubber bullets and tear gas canisters at people's faces and crotches. They went on to say some police officers even contemplated suicide. I have to ask myself, how are these psychologically compromised individuals allowed to be cops? Because if they don't care about themselves, how are they supposed to care about anybody else? Their feelings are hurt, and we have families who are dealing with the murder of a loved one at the hands of the police, and they're here fighting for justice. I was in a social media discussion, and one of the naysayers kept speaking on the property damage, the burnt buildings, and looting. He even posted photos. But I did not see what he saw. I saw the writing on the wall, the messages that read, can you hear us now? My mind went to our history in the 1960s, Bloody Sunday, when our struggle was brought into the living rooms of America, and that's what it took to wake up a nation. Martin Luther King Jr., a man who gave his life for a dream, and that dream is in each and every one of us. The question is, what are you going to do with that dream? A lot of people want an illusion because the reality just can't be. But on May 25th, that reality was shattered, and here we are awakening a conscience and fighting to get that boot off our neck. Recently, I had the privilege to spend the day with Martin Luther King III, the son of the late Dr. King Jr. and his family. This was an honor to me. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is an inspiration to me and many others around the world. So this time that I spent with his family was all the more special. You see, Dr. Martin Luther, Jr., Martin Luther King Jr. said that our lives begin to end the day that we become silent about the things that matter, end quote. Every time we witness the modern day lynching of a person of color, it is the scene of the cracking of the whip, saying you better stay in line, expletive, or this will happen to you. All the while, we fear for our children, being raised in a society where politicians can make false promises for votes and photo ops, the people sworn to protect and serve violate their oaths all at the expense of our bodies and our blood. We have to change and we need justice and we need leadership to be right along with us and demonstrating integrity behind the scenes when crafting policy and holding people accountable for their actions or inaction. I ask you, how much blood, how many persons of color, how many poor people have to die for your thirst to be quenched? I ask you all to not be silent, because when we are silent, evil does, and history has shown, it will fill the void. To my elected, appointed officials and oath takers, especially the ones who fail to speak up or who perpetuate the status quo, you either are with the people or you are with the institution. Whenever something like this happens, no matter where in our country this happens, we feel it and we are affected. And to my white community, do not be the white moderate who thinks we should wait for a better season or a better time. The time is now. And you must take a side, the side of accountability, equality, and justice for all, or the side of the status quo of division, brutality, and privilege. We are all watching. The world is watching. The batons of prior movements for equality and justice have been passed down, and I assure you we are up for the challenge. We will not stop. We will not waver. We will not forget. We will fight until equality and justice have been realized. So I will end in the words and spirit of Martin Luther King Jr. Justice delayed is justice denied. Rest in peace to all who have made the ultimate sacrifice and are still awaiting justice. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Powerful words. We'll uh, have all of this posted on the Justice Squad 
uh, Facebook page as well as um, Family Supporting Families Against Police Violence, the Solmanad page. Uh, so you guys look for that. It's going to be out there. And please go ahead and share all these yourselves.